Everybody, I'm Cantonese Cat. Everyone, Cantonese Cat here. Monthly chart is so fine. Very difficult to discern whether or not this is a bull trend or a bear trend. Certainly, if you look at the daily, it's a bear trend, but if you look at the weekly, it's actually a bull trend. If you look at the monthly, it could also be a bull trend. If you just pull up the Bollinger Bands over here, you can see that um, the middle right here is the 20 month moving average. And what the 20 month moving average so far has been doing is been kind of wrapping around price over here and you can see that price for so far has been months number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven months on the upper part of the bollinger band and when um, price tries to spend a lot of time on the upper part of the bollinger band generally it ends up becoming a bull trend and trying to price you know bring a price up and sure enough there's a trend change you can see the 20 month moving average has been pointing down 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 in around november 2023 it start to really start crawling up over here it's been crawling up for about half a year and so far it's been used as support last month as well as used support earlier in the month looks like it's been finding support and i thought it was going to be pretty decent support the reason why that is because it's positively pointing up it's pointing up right here so this is going to be a 20 month moving average that is going to now serve as support to potentially push price higher as a result of this trend change now the Bollinger Band is still not quite expanded. This still seems to be a little bit more consolidating over here. And that's exactly what you're seeing. You know, it's probably just been kind of consolidating here around this range. But that's okay. You know, though so far the monthly chart seem to be suggesting based on the 20 moving average, seems to be suggesting, suggesting this could be a bull trend. Now, the other thing to look at is you look at the Ishimoku cloud. This is a little bit of a mixed thing here because it did have a bullish um, tank and kitchen cross last month. On, the, on March of 2024. But right now, price got rejected by both of these levels over here by the tank and Andy Kitchen, even though it had a bullish cross over here. So right now, both of these are going to potentially serve as resistance. Um, and they're kind of pointing down. So it, it, it's a little bit uncertain here if you look at the monthly Shibuku Cloud analysis. But you do have it having a bullish cross over here, even though it can take maybe a little bit more time to try and break back above to get to where you want it to go. So there are some findings here that are a little bit more mixed, but I do think that the Bollinger Band is trying to tell your story because you are testing some support and you're going back up. So at some point, I think the two indicators between the Ichimoku Cloud and the 20 month moving average, you're going to end up sandwiching between the two and it's going to try to pick a direction one way or another. Because I, because the 20 month moving average is pointing up, I think that's probably going to end up winning over the Tekken Kitchen up here because they also had a bullish cross and that's a little bit more mixed so those are kind of things that i'm kind of looking at now i'm going to pull some magic here now you're just looking at the basic candles i want to pull magic here i want to pull up something called the hakanashi candle what the hakanashi candles are is that instead of looking at individual months price action you're also taking into account of the months uh, price action prior to that so it helps kind of averages out how this moves out the way that the candles look and it actually looks like it's providing you more of a signal for trend rather than just looking at the individual candle and it gets you know whipsaw all around the way you're looking more of a pattern of a trend if you will so what you're seeing here is it's been a whole year going down there's no question this is a pretty significant bear trend but so far you know for the last year year and a half or so you're seeing a little bit more of a green signal that has broken through about this horizontal resistance zone. And right now we're just basically bouncing and kind of back testing it a little bit here. Now, I don't like this kind of, you know, a little bit of like a dead cat bounce kind of thing. Um, it could potentially break kind of through the floor, but if you look at the volume of this um, pattern over here, you see a little bit of a different story because what you're seeing here is that this breakout over here of this horizontal zone has been very powerful in terms of volume. And over here, the downtrend, even though it does have a little bit of increased volume over here, the volume over here is nowhere near the buying volume over here on these previous months. And when you have a bounce over here, it tends to be happening an increasing volume over here. Now, last month, it did end up having like a little bit of a red, high volume red um, candle over here, but actually turned out to be quite like a little bit like hammer over here. So um, all of this actually tend to show me that there may be um, a lot of um, buying energy over here that has been shown really over the volume candles over here. And there's already been a lot of very, you know, big exhaustion of selling energy over here. This last couple of months has been a little bit, you know, questionable in terms of what is happening. But if I pull up the weekly, 
it might give you a little bit of a better picture over here. Now, weekly is going to tell you a little bit more in terms of what is happening. The um, downtrend over here has been met with pretty high selling volume initially, but towards the end of it, it, st it tends to be met with you know a lot of bit like these exhaustive kind of kind of sell volume over here. So when you have finally have like all the sellers out, buyers start to come in, and you start having a lot of these buying you know, uh, pressure over here with these kind of increasing price along with increasing volume over here. So there's a lot of buying pressure over here. You still have sellers though. A lot of sellers are just kind of waiting for a bounce before they before they can get out. So they're still going to end up having you know, a little bit of exhaustion to buy a lot of sellers are out of here. Pretty big volume buy over here, right? Sell volume, pretty big volume of buying over here. And also, you, again, you're met with some sell volume over here. So whole, all this looks like an accumulation range. Breakout of the zone happened again in very high volume around June of um, 2023. And once you broke out, it back tested on relatively low volume, bounced on pretty high volume. And then again, back testing. This is a pretty high volume candle right here. Um, but so far, the selling volume of this downtrend has been down. So that's one thing to kind of pay attention to is the volume is really telling you that the buyers are coming in, the sellers are exhausted throughout the entire two and a half years. You're really seeing a pretty clear trend in terms of like, you know, more of accumulation range. And this over here could be more representative of a reaccumulation here too, because great buying, declining selling. So all of this could be, you know, if it is fitting more of like a back test of this range over here before breakout. And it does look a little bit more like what um, Bitcoin has done as well, where if you look at the zone over here, it had a very, very similar horizontal zone over here where it broke out on relatively high volume and then back tested it twice on declining volume. And right now, that's kind of how SoFi is looking too in terms of the volume analysis. That's what it's kind of looking like the selling volume is a little bit exhausted over here. So there are some things to like about this chart. Even though you just look at the prize itself, it's just been kind of bouncy balls. It hasn't really done anything for um, closer to about nine or 10 months now, but it actually does look like there's a lot of bullish energy that might be building up based on what I'm looking at under volume here. Some of the other indicators that I look at are not going to tell you as much. For example, if I pull up the um, Ichimoku cloud on the weekly, it's just basically bouncing ball um, between the Ichimoku cloud, broke above oscillating broke that broke down below um, right now it looks like it might be trying to you know get back and trying to challenge this um, so it's just basically kind of been oscillating here so there's not really like a clear signal over here on ichimoku cloud um, and if you look at the um <clears throat> support band it also is not really giving it a very clear trend over here it's just been kind of oscillating around a flat boomerang support band over here but again this is also the same look this is also a very, very same look where you're just kind of oscillating around a flattening boomerang support band above this breakout zone right here. This has the same look as what you know Bitcoin did before its breakout, because it's just kind of oscillating around a flattening boomerang support band that back tested this horizontal zone here, found support and it ended up breaking out, right? Again, there's no guarantee that SoFi is gonna end up breaking out. I mean, next thing you know, CPI is coming Wednesday. If the read is again hot, there might be a, you know another breakdown below the zone and there might be some other technical stuff that we need to work out. There's never a guarantee, right? I mean, all these things are still based on fundamentals, are still based on buyers and sellers dynamics. And if people don't find the macroeconomic environment to be favorable, then they might still end up, you know, selling it doesn't matter whether or not there's a great accumulation zone here it might end up still need to get some additional time here to, to work out the technicals but regardless it does look like big money might be knowing what they're exactly doing you know just looking at the volume profile over here it's a little bit suspicious now instead of just looking at the boomerang support band another weekly thing you can look at is actually look at the weekly trend over here you look at um, the moving averages for the 20 50 and 100 there's no dispute that right now you still have a full bull trend and the 20 is actually crawling up, 50 is going up and 100 is also crawling up. So 50, sorry, 20 over 50 over 100, very nice separation that's happening between 20 and 50 now again. Currently price, what it did is it basically just went down. I'm going to take off the um, Hikanashi candles here. I'm going to do the regular ones to show you. Even if I just use the um, Hikanashi candles, you can also see that 
price back tested 100 week moving average found support and right now 50 and, and, and 20 are pointing up so most likely they're going to not serve as very strong resistance at all last time when we have a very very similar setup over here where price just kind of like balanced uh, underneath over here and trying to break back above the 20 and d50 that are pointing up was over here it kind of just slides through it like swiss cheese because their averages are pointing up they're not necessarily going to serve as very very powerful resistance level at all if they're pointing down it tends to be serving as more of a resistance level but they're pointing up generally they're not you know really thought to be a power resistance level at all if anything things that are pointing up like the 100 moving average over here could serve a little bit more as a support like the 50 over here serve a little bit more as a support so right now we're we're looking at a full weekly bull trend that finally developed after all this time and right now it looks like we might be sustaining it it would be ideal again depending on how wednesday goes with cpi data it, it, the, the thing about technical analysis is you might not need to know everything that's going on in the economy you might not need to know the intricacies of all the macroeconomics because even those people who are doing fundamental analysis anyway they're speculating they don't know anything they think that this could be that they think it could be that they think that there are a lot of these factors they're going to bias them to think one way or another these fundamentalists they do not know exactly what's going to happen looking at technical analysis can give you a better idea in terms of what the big money are doing because they probably have more information than we do looking at big money in terms of what they've been doing so far it does look like they are potentially trying to develop a weekly bull trend here and we'll see whether or not this weekly bull trend transpires if it does great if it doesn't that's okay it, it goes back to the fundamentals it goes back to it as to whether or not you think that this is something that is worth buying based on looking at the balance sheet based on looking at whether or not they are at the infancy of profitability which I think they are. You know, they just posted a profitable quarter on the last earnings. Um, and sometimes Wall Street like to kind of sit back and wait for things to you know transpire, maybe maybe second time's a charm, who knows? But currently we are also basically just waiting. One other thing I do want to point out is that the stock has been making the same exact fractal as it did last time. What I'm gonna show you is, what I'm really gonna tell you is this, you know, you have a high right here, right? And then it's followed by another high right here. And it kind of did like a little bit step down over here and it came back up real quick and formed another high right here. And you have a low right here and you also have a low right here. It's a little bit of like a higher low, if you will, right? The same pattern can also be seen over here. It's basically been forming the same fractal. Hi, hi. Well, 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 hello. Ah, a little bit too big over there. Hi, hi, hi. Low. And it's been forming a little bit of a higher low right here too. This is basically a very, very similar pattern, you know, where it just kind of bouncy balls over here. It does the same exact thing. Matter of fact, if you look at this um, pattern over here, what it's been doing is it's been forming a round bottom right here, followed by a sharp bottom right here. So normally you can think of like what, what people are talking about is like Adam and Eve where there's a sharp bottom followed by a round bottom. You can also have Eve and Adam. This is also an accumulation pattern over here. We have a round bottom over here and a sharp bottom over here. So that's a very nice double bottom. It looks like it carried through and ended up breaking out, back tested it, went all the way back up. Sellers hit their target up here, decided to sell. The selling pressure is coming in. Buying pressure still wasn't there quite just yet. Form another rounded bottom over here, another Eve bottom. And guess what it's doing right now? It's forming and potentially an atom bottom over here. So there's a potential that the same fractal over here is working out as it did over here and it's actually kind of a little bit eerie too if you look at the way that things are played out um, it, it looks very similar in terms of what our weight placements are in terms of the highs in terms of the lows I, I just wonder whether or not this is a reaccumulation pattern that's very, very similar to the accumulation pattern that was seen throughout 2022 and early 2023 this was kind of looking to me, uh, like, like to me, but of course there's never going to be a guarantee in terms of what happens, right? 
I don't have any magic eight ball. I don't know what's going to happen on Wednesday. I don't know what the CPI data is going to be like. I don't know whether or not the CPI data is real. I don't know whether or not the CPI data is not real. All I know is that it, it's looking like it is trying to repeat a pattern that has happened before. And each um, stock has their own personality. It looks like this might be starting to show as SoFi's personality over here, where it just keeps on like to form these kinds of accumulation and potentially reaccumulation ranges. Um, that's all I have to say about SoFi for now. I did post a lot about SoFi earlier tonight. I may, probably made about like 20 something odd posts on, um, on X about SoFi, but I just wanted to share you my thoughts. Sometimes it's better to verbally express what I'm feeling about SoFi rather than just posting a visual post because a lot of times you're going to be able to capture the whole concept of what I'm thinking. Regardless, none of these things are guaranteed. All of these things are going to be educated guesses. They're not guaranteed. I'm just trying to show you what I'm seeing here in terms of supply and demand dynamics, which I think does matter, but none of these are guaranteed. So please take it with a grain of salt. If it doesn't work out, as long as you believe in the fundamentals, it's okay. If you're trying to use these um, information that I'm providing you here to trade, then you know that's something else. And I, I'm not sure if I can help you one or another. Speaking of which, I do want to say that I do think that um, this up move here is anticipated because I do see a very traditional bearish divergence here between price. I'm going to leave a little bit more, a uh, little bit of nugget here before I end the video between price and something called OBV on balance volume, which is a way to basically calculate how much buying or selling volume there is for each candle. And you just basically use like aggregate oscillating kind of um, indicator here. The absolute value here doesn't really matter as much. What matters really is whether or not you see any potential divergences that don't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, I just want to point out this one thing here. You have a, oops, you have a bit of a um, divergence over here where you have price going down and you have the, um, on balance volume going up, right? I'm going to pull up the um, Hakanashi candles here, which can you know kind of illustrate a little bit better in terms of what I'm trying to say. Again, price is going down, OBV is going up, right? Guess what happened down here too? Price going down, OBV going up. You have a bullish divergence over here, and you end up having a pretty big bounce from that. Now we're seeing a very, very similar divergence over here. Even the candles that happen subsequent to this over here is looking very similar. And the trend also is looking very, very similar too in terms of the pattern. A lot of people look at this, they would think this is probably a bear flag. You know, you're probably right, this is probably a bear flag, but you can't just keep on having bear flags forever. I mean, at some point you're gonna end up having a breakout from a bear flag. So, you do see a, a pretty clear bear, uh, bullish divergence here between price and OBV. It could work out to our favor and it can end up pushing price a lot higher like it did over here. We'll see what happens. It's been close to 20 minutes. Thank you for listening. Have a good one. Bye.